Hello everybody! Today I'm going to review two books, Memory and Komar by Lois Master Bujold. These are the 10th and 11th books in the Borkoskin saga, which if you haven't been watching all of my previous videos and you don't know what the Borkoskin saga is, it is a long-running military science fiction series that Bujold started in the early 80s and is still ongoing. It, the series has won some Hugo Awards and some Nebula Awards, and it's fantastic! Since both of these books are from the second half of a long-running series, I am not going to go into a lot of plot depth. I'm gonna do my best to not drop any spoilers for previous books. If you may remember, a little while ago I did a kind of spoilerish discussion video about the previous book in the series called Mirror Dance. I talked a lot about the themes of Mirror Dance and how the main character Miles and his clone brother Mark were struggling with their respective identities, who they are, and whether they are or are not, as the case may be, mirror images of each other. While Mirror Dance was told from the perspective of both Miles and Mark, I felt that it was really more about the ultimate conclusion of Mark's journey. There is an end for him. He discovers something about himself by the end of Mirror Dance, and there is not, in my opinion, really a conclusion to Miles's personal identity crisis in that book. And that's where memory comes in. The plot is that Miles screws up. He puts his Imperial security job on the line when he lies about a personal health crisis that he's been trying to deal with in secret, and when Simon Ilion, the head of Imperial security, finds out about it, this is very, very bad for Miles. Part of why this is so bad for Miles, other than the fact that he's flushing down the drain a 13-year impset career, is that it cuts him off from his Admiral Naismith identity. Naismith is a cover identity that Impsec has been taking advantage of. Miles created it to blow off some steam as a teenager, but it has ballooned into something much bigger. And when Miles loses his Impsec job, he also loses access to his Naismith persona and the release valve that that gives his personality. It turns out that Miles has been living pretty much the last 13 years as Naismith. He's kind of been running away from what it means to be Miles Verkosigan, and in much the same way that Mark was running away from the identity handed to him in Mirror Dance. So Miles doesn't know what it really means to be Miles Verkosigan. He just doesn't no, he hasn't lived in that skin for more than a couple of days or a couple of weeks at a time for over a decade. So it's like he's addicted to being Naismith. Naismith is fun, energetic, an adrenaline junkie, constantly going on adventures. Miles Vorkosigan isn't like that. Memory is about Miles' internal struggle, his fears about what's going to happen to him now that he doesn't have the job that he has spent his entire life trying to get, and his struggle with his identity. And I would say that memory is ultimately a conclusion to the identity crisis theme for Miles, so it's both been concluded for Mark and now for Miles. I adored memory. Mirror Dance set an extremely high bar, which makes it difficult for a lot of the following books to really compare. They can't really compete with Mirror Dance, in my opinion. But this is still Bujold writing at her best about some fascinating ideas. I adored the characters. I adored the storyline. I really love the themes from Mirror Dance and In Memory. And my favorite thing about this book probably is that um, there's a lot more of Simon Ilion in it, which is odd. I mean, you read, I generally read Vorkosigan books because they have miles in them. <laughs> it's cool to get cameos from long-running characters like his parents, Cordelia and Errol, to, you know, have Ivan the Twit, you know, pop up somewhere. But one of the long-running secondary characters that sort of shows up at the beginning and the end of a lot of Miles' books is Simon Elyon. He's the head of Impsec. 
you know, he go he dates way back to the very first books in the series, and I've always been really interested in him. I've always liked his personality, and he he actually shows up in a significant part of this book because it is set almost entirely on Barayar for once, and Miles happens to be investigating something that happens to Elyon in in the story. So. It was just a joy to read about Elyon. I was laughing out loud at some of the things that happened. I can't tell you why because that would be spoilers, but things that happen with Elyon in the second half of the book and his personal relationships, I and, and Ivan's reactions was just so hilarious. <laughs> yeah, this book was a joy to read. I highly recommend the series. Komar is a very different book from the two preceding books because, as I said, a lot of the longer running themes and some of the storylines have been pretty neatly tied up by this point. Komar gives us a new setting on the planet of Komar, which is... it was invaded by the Bahraeans, so it's kind of part of the Bahraean Empire. Uh, there has been a lot of tension between the Komarans and the Bahraeans. I'm pretty sure I'm saying Bahraeans wrong, but there's a lot of political tension, a lot of cultural, social tension between the two. This book also introduces us to, finally, a brand new character. Her name is Ekaterine, and she is also a point of view character, so the story switches between her viewpoint and Miles' viewpoint. And Miles has come to Komar with another Imperial auditor named Vorthus. He is actually Ekaterin's uncle, and they are investigating an accident that has partially destroyed part of Komar's terraforming project. It's um, like a solar panel array above the planet that heats up the planet, otherwise it would be very cold. And it appears that a ship has collided with the solar panel array, the, they call it the Soleta. And they're there to find out if it was truly an accident or if it was a terrorist act. In many ways, this story is much more like a mystery plot than some of the previous stories. Miles is always sticking his nose in places and discovering things and investigating, but this really felt more like a detective story to me than a lot of the previous books. And that is because Probably a lot of it is because Miles' new job as Imperial Auditor is basically an Imperial investigator and detective. Ekaterine gives us a really interesting look at Miles from the outside. Most of the books give you Miles' perspective from himself, you know, inside of his head, how he views himself, how he thinks, following his train of thought. So it's always nice to see him through the eyes of other characters. There are things that they pick up on that he doesn't really talk about, especially about his physical appearance, how he looks much older than he really is. It's very interesting, and I thought Ekaterine was... her Because of her cultural and social background, you get a different kind of viewpoint of him, and it's part of, I think, a, a character development arc for Ekaterine as well. There's a lot in there tied up with Bahrain traditions and customs with genetic mutations in the past, and the fact that Ekaterine, like many Bahraeans, looks at Miles and thinks he has a genetic mutation. And he doesn't, <laughs> but they're deeply, deeply afraid of, of mutations. And Ekaterine does also have her own story with the failure of her marriage, her desire to protect her son, and, and at the end of the story, yeah, she's, she's actually integral to the investigative plot. It was nice to have a female character finally introduced who could really, truly have the potential to be a love interest for Miles, a long-term love interest. Not only does she have all of the elements that really attract Miles, she's intelligent, strong, independent, kind of scary sometimes, and a lot taller than he is, but she may also be willing. <laughs> A lot of the problem he's had with love interests in the past is that while they really like him, they only like part of him, or they definitely do not want to live on Bahrayar. Ekaterine, though, she's already Vor, and she's already Bahrayan. She considers Bahrayar to be her home, so maybe... maybe she might be willing to be Lady Vorkos again in the future? I am looking forward, as I hope she shows up in future books. 
There's really not much more I have to say about Komar. It is a very good book. I liked the story and the characters. It was kind of a nice simple breather from the really intense stories of the previous couple of books, but it's not, I don't think it can really compete with Mirror Dance or Memory on just sheer, oh my god, this is a fantastic story, I want to think about this forever. It just doesn't quite do that. I, I read it really more like I would read a fun mystery book. Overall, my opinion is that Memory and Komar are both very strong installments in the Vorkosikin series. They just solidify my love for Bujold, my admiration for her, her writing and her storytelling skills, and yes, I love Miles and I am more attached to him with every single book. That's it for this review. I hope I've kept this moderately spoiler free for any of the previous books in the series. Cross fingers. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will talk to you again in my next video. Bye!